is her favorite flavor. So I made some super special chocolate cupcakes with chocolate frosting. Mm. Yummy. And today at school, I saw one of my friends wearing a super cool jacket. I told her I loved it and then I invited her to the party. So I got some special streamers to match her jacket. Zoe, ooh, ooh, doing things for your friends, are you? Hi, Ollie, I sure am. Helping others shows love, it's true. There are more ways to show love, too. Listen to this story, just follow me through. Ooh, ooh. Follow me through. I'm Luis the Handyman. There. Now it should work. My Aunt Sheila is coming home from the hospital after she broke her hip. And I thought she could use one of these reach or grabber things. <laughs> See? You drop something. And you don't need to bend down to get it. The reach or grabber will get it for you. Ta-da! <laughs> I think this will really help her. And it reminds me of today's story. Do you want to help me build it? <gasps> Great! Let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, hammer! Great job, little helpers. You can put your hammers down. Now we just need our story tools. Yep, we have everything we need. All month long, we've been talking about how Jesus loves everyone and that if he had a party, everyone would be invited. Grown-ups. Children. Everyone can celebrate that Jesus loves them because Jesus loves everyone. And Jesus wants us to love everyone too. In fact, he said, do everything in love. Can you say that with me? Ready? Do everything in love. Oh, wow. Everything? Let's think about that. Let's say you're at the grocery store and the checkout worker seems like he had a sad day. You're done with your groceries and you are just about to leave. What could you do to show love? Try this. Can you smile and wave? Bye, sir. Thank you. Have a great day. Look, he's smiling and waving back. You showed him love by being kind. Great job. Okay, let's try this one. Your brother runs into the kitchen and really wants a cookie. 
But you have the last one. He's upset that he did not get a cookie. What could you do to show love? Try this. Do you want some? You did it! Sharing the cookie made your brother feel loved. Great job! Okay, what about this one? You and your friend are playing in the sandbox at the park. You are having so much fun together. But you look over and there's a kid who's all alone by the slide. They don't have a friend to play with. What could you do to show love? Yell it out! Yes! You could ask them to play! Hey! Do you want to play with us? See? You are great at doing everything in love. Whether you're on the playground, or at a dance class, or at school, or at home with your family. You can do what Jesus said and do everything in love. So, let's celebrate because Jesus loves everyone! Woo! <laughs> hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who does Jesus love? Jesus loves everyone. Yes, it's true. Now, let's hear it from you. Tell me, who loves everyone? Jesus loves everyone. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Adios! So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus loves everyone, and we can too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, Jesus said to do everything in love, and I know we can. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I can't wait for the party. I'll see you next time. Bye! Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. <gasps> Hello, friends. I'm Erica. It's a busy day today. Don't believe me? Check out my block. Oh, take a look at all this hustle and bustle. These people could use some compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. But who has time for compassion when you're so busy all the time? I mean, it's the same every day. Get up, get dressed, pop dart for breakfast, school, lunch, more school. Then there's homework, video games, a few selfies, dinner, music practice, and bed. And then the alarm goes off and you start all over again. It's not just you that's busy. People are busy everywhere you look. Moms and dads, shh. Business people, buy all the things. Servers, you have the iced tea with no lemon, you have the lemonade with no ice, you have a cup of ice with no tea, a slice of lemon, right? It can seem like there's not enough time to show compassion. But as you'll see with Jesus in today's story, Sometimes you have to make time. Pop-tart me. Yeah. <laughs> See you in a few. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 
through 52. Jesus spent time with people of every kind from every background. He answered trick challenges from important religious leaders and sincere questions from rich men. Sell everything you have. Give the money to those who are poor, then come follow me. Jesus didn't hesitate to welcome kids. Let the little children come to me. He was endlessly patient with his own friends when they argued about who should be first. The Son of Man did not come to be served. Instead, he came to serve others. Even as Jesus made his last journey to Jerusalem, he didn't let what was ahead distract him from the people he met along the way. Uh, hey Jesus, this crowd we picked up in Jericho is really slowing us down. I want to pick up the pace. But Jesus didn't try to shake off the crowds that followed him. It's Jesus. Jesus. A short way ahead, a man named Bartimaeus sat by the road on a torn and dusty mat. He stretched out his arms desperately, hoping someone would drop a few coins in his empty hand. Please. Help me. Bartimaeus was blind. There was no work he could do to earn money, so he depended on the kindness of strangers passing by. The crowd quickly surrounded him. He's right there! Look it's him, I see Jesus! Jesus. I, swear, I, swear, I, swear, I swear I see him over there. Jesus? Bartimaeus had heard of Jesus. He'd heard stories of sick people who'd been healed by Jesus, and in his heart, he believed they were true. Jesus! Bartimaeus knew he couldn't let this chance slip away. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Shh, be quiet. Jesus probably doesn't have any time for you. Son of David, have mercy on me. Let it go. Jesus! Through all the noise and clamor, Jesus heard Bartimaeus' plea. It would have been easy to keep walking, to push on towards Jerusalem. But instead, Jesus stopped. Call for him. What? What's happening? Cheer up! On your feet! Bless your heart, Jesus is actually calling for you! Me? He, he heard me! Bartimaeus jumped up, tossing aside his dusty coat. He staggered towards the voice he'd heard. Hands in the crowd helped him to find his way. Jesus! What do you want me to do for you? Teacher! Teacher! I want to be able to see! Jesus smiled as he looked directly into Bartimaeus' unseeing eyes. Go, your faith has healed you. Bartimaeus blinked and blinked again. Bright colors and shapes flashed before his eyes, vivid and breathtaking. I, my eyes, uh, I can see. As a brand new world came into focus, Bartimaeus fixed his gaze on the face before him, the deep eyes and kind smile of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> Thank you! Jesus nodded, then turned again towards Jerusalem. As the crowd began to move, Bartimaeus joined in to follow the man who had stopped for a few minutes to change his life. Give me five challenge. Can you give me five answers in 10 seconds? Let's play. Give me five flavors of ice cream in 10 seconds. Give me five Christmas songs in 10 seconds. Give me five pizza toppings in 10 seconds. Give me five farm animals in 10 seconds. Give me 
five breakfast cereals in 10 seconds. Give me five types of dogs in 10 seconds. Give me five things that fly in 10 seconds. Come and get it. Only two dollars. Come and get it. What's this? Oh, you know how kids set up a neighborhood lemonade stand to try to make a little extra money? Yeah. Well, who says adults can't set up a stand to do the same thing in their neighborhood? Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you. I'll take one. Okay, that'll be two dollars, sir. There you go. All right. And your change is three. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And here we go. What is this? I thought you were selling lemonade. No. It's fish on a stick. Hmm. Yeah. You know, never mind. You can keep the $2. Oh. Okay. Why does nobody want you? Hello, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. Welcome, Welcome to, to the So-and-So so -and -so Show. Hey, we've been having a good time celebrating the people on our blocks. And trying to make time to care about others. That's right. We... Were you expecting a guest? No, and I guess you weren't either. No. Well, well, these are fun. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Sugar! Sugar! Come on in. Yeah, have a seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, it is so good to see you. Is it? Yeah, I thought so. Well, okay, of course we know who you are. Yeah, impossible to but forget. Why, why don't you let everyone else know who you are and what you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sugar tilt -a -whirl. Yes. That's my real name. And I'm a cotton candy vendor for the Thomason Traveling Carnival. That's right. I know. So, um, uh, is there a particular reason why you decided to come on the show? Or uh, did, you, did you just want to hang out? Which we're totally okay with. It... Well, you know I watched the show. Uh, we oh, did so that, thankful. Yeah. <laughs> so, you've been talking about being a good neighbor. Mm-hmm. And I got a problem with that. Oh, we can you change do. that. You see, since I work in a traveling carnival, I ain't got no neighbors. You, so you're trying to leave me out or something? No, Never. it's not like that. You see, neighbors and neighborhood doesn't necessarily mean the, the people who live on your same street or anything. It doesn't? No, no, no. no. It, it just means the people you're around. Okay. So for you, it could be the other carnival workers. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean like Bobo the Clown? Oh, or Stinky Sal? Oh, is he another clown? No. He works the Ferris wheel. Oh. Huh? Yeah, yes, like them. But, yeah. oh. So I'm supposed to be nice to them? Uh, well, sure, but it's not just about being nice. It's about being a good neighbor, yeah, like yeah. helping them out or showing them compassion when they need it. Or just spending time with them. You know, maybe Stinky Sal just needs somebody to hang out with him and, and perhaps give him a stick of deodorant. <laughs> Why? 
He smells great. Like peaches. Oh, well, I just, why do you, the, what was his name? Never mind. So is there someone other than Stinky Sal or Bobo the Clown that might need to be shown a little compassion at the carnival? Maybe Mary. She's new and a little strange. Oh, you think she's strange. That's what I said. Okay. Nobody really knows how to act around Mary. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's kind of different. Okay, but Mary is still your neighbor. Yeah. yeah, but some people are just hard to love, you know? <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> I think you should at least try, though. Let me go get her so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, is she here? No. If she was here, I wouldn't have to go get her. Yeah, okay, sure, yeah. Go get her, go get her. That's my bad. That's my bad. <laughs> Why do you keep running? I'm just up? trying to be friendly. Well, quit it. Uh, please welcome someone else who knows stuff. <laughs> Hello, are you Mary? Uh, uh, come in and have a seat. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, what happened to Sugar? Oh, she's waiting in the truck. One of us has to stay with it because it's filled with frogs for the catapult game. Oh. Now tell us who you are and uh, what you know. Oh, my name is Mary Goaround, and I just started working at the carnival as a ticket taker, goat herder, and carousel operator. Wow, you do all that? Yeah, when you're the newbie, you have to do all kinds of jobs so you can learn how the whole carnival works. Oh, that sounds like a lot. Oh, it is. But everyone has been so patient and kind. Even Sugar? Oh, especially Sugar. She's the best. When I first started, I didn't know if I was going to fit in. But Sugar was just so friendly. She took me under her wing and made sure I was comfortable and never felt left out. Are we talking about the same Sugar? Yeah, why? No, no reason. Really. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's her. We gotta get those frogs back. <laughs> it was so nice talking to you both. You know, you should really come to the carnival while we're in town. I know Sugar would love to see you. She thinks you guys are the funniest. <laughs> She thinks we're funny. Who knew? Yeah, and who knew Sugar would be such a good neighbor? I think Sugar and Mary are the same person. Shh. What, they look exactly It's alike. Bible Story Time with Kellen! How's it going, guys? Great. Great, swell. Yeah, you got anything that might help us understand what it means to be a good neighbor? Actually, I might. It's a simple story, but it's pretty clear. Take it away, Kellen. It isn't always easy to know how to be a good neighbor, especially if it's someone we don't know. But the good news is this, Jesus was really good at this. There's a story in the Bible, in the book of Mark, about a guy named Bartimaeus, who was. Wait just a minute. Oh, would you look at that, a talking goat. What can I do for you, goat? I'm Leslie. I'm the goat from the story you're telling. Um, I don't think there is a goat in the story. It was Jericho. A couple thousand years ago, there were goats everywhere. Fine. You're saying you saw the story I'm telling happen? Sure did. I was standing right next to Bartimaeus. And I was standing on Leslie the goat when this momentous event happened. Um. Who, who was that? It is I, Ferdinand, the most interesting fly in the world. Let's go with it. So, I'm assuming you both knew Bartimaeus. Absolutely, lutely. What you say is correct, my friend. All righty then. So, Bartimaeus was blind, meaning he couldn't see. So, to survive, his only option at the time was to beg on the side of the street 
One day, Jesus and a large group of people happened to be passing right by where Bartimaeus was. When he heard them passing, Bartimaeus started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's exactly what he said. Some people in the group told Bartimaeus to be quiet and leave Jesus alone. They, they were quite rude. But that only made Bartimaeus shout louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then the amazing part happened. So true, Kellen. Jesus heard Bartimaeus calling him and he actually stopped. And he told the people around him to call Bartimaeus over. And Bartimaeus hopped up and went over to Jesus. And when he got there, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Can you believe that? I know. Jesus had to have been very busy, but he took time to ask a man he had never met what he could do for him. It was like he'd known him for years. Like he was his neighbor. I know. Jesus had to have been very busy, but he took the time to ask a man that he never met what he could do for him. He said, go, your faith has healed you. And all of a sudden, bam, Bartimaeus could see. His vision became as good as mine. I have over 3,000 eyes. That's why I am the most interesting fly in the world. Well, I really do appreciate both of you helping out with this story. It was my pleasure, muchacho. Anytime. What Jesus did for Bartimaeus was amazing, but it wasn't a one-time thing. Jesus was always taking the time to have compassion on people who were overlooked. He treated them like they were neighbors. The end. Jesus really was a good neighbor to people, wasn't he? and they didn't have to live in his neighborhood. Yeah, people at wells, people who were fishing, people up in trees, anybody. Jesus just made the time to care for them. And can you imagine if we all made time for others like that? We could change the world. It would definitely change the world of some people, no doubt. And I think that leads you into today's question. So I'll leave you with that, and I'll see you guys next time. Reveal the question. When has someone made time for you? Well, you always make time for me. I mean, even if it's three o'clock in the morning and I call you because I hear something scratching on the door and it turns out to be my dog. Or Mr. Lee across the street when we go out to get our mail at the same time, we talk for hours. Or Dawn who cleans my teeth. She always listens to everything I say, even when I'm not here. Uh, well, I was gonna say Mr. Adams, who's one of my upstairs neighbors. Uh, he's always there if I need a hand or if I need advice or something. You know, it's nice when someone takes a little extra time to really listen to you, isn't it? What? Never mind. We'll see you guys next week for a brand new so-and-so show. No, seriously, what? I'll take one. Right. Fish on a stick. Sword on a stick. A on a stick. Hey. No. Hand on a stick. Gourd on a stick. Stick on a stick. R on a stick? Mm. Tater on a stick? Yeah. Did you pay me? <laughs> <laughs>
some of that time showing compassion to the people around us who need it. That's the one thing to remember today. Make time to help others. You may not be able to help everyone, but if one person makes time to help another person, then pretty soon there's a chain reaction of compassion. And Pop-Tarts always help. You get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart, and you get a Pop-Tart. Mm. And let's not forget, you too get Pop-Tarts. See you around.